Hey guys, welcome to Big Laws Official. You can see I have a very special guest with me today, the one and only Andrea Thompson, World's Strongest Woman 2018. 18, yes. Yeah, she's going to be World's Strongest Woman 2020. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we just had a really good training session. You're looking really, really good training for the Arnold's right now. Yeah, yeah, it's going well. Feeling good. Tell us a little bit about kind of the plans you've got coming up this year and um, a little bit about your past as well. Just um, for anyone that doesn't know, I mean, Andrea is one of the absolute best strong women on the planet. Uh, probably the best in the world at the yoke. Good at a number of other really pressing, you're squatting, deadlifting. Just awesome. Get in there. And now you're having me pestering you all the time about <laughs> technique and stuff like that and trying to refine things. Yes. But um, we just had a training session today. She doesn't like me right now. No, my, my legs aren't <laughs> killing me. And um, after event training yesterday as well, I'm a little bit stiff. But um, career-wise, I started out in CrossFit. Uh, that's my background. So I have a lot of foundation, um, so, you know, the foundations from that. Um, obviously, the techniques are a lot different in, in CrossFit than they are in Strongman. So I had to learn new techniques as well as uh, different lifting skills. Um, and then just progress over the years. Um, gone on to win Britain's four times. Um, like Loz said, World Strongest Women 2018. Um, plans for this year. My my plan is is to win the Arnold Professional uh, Strong Woman uh, coming up in March, um, and Britain's Strongest Woman uh, 2020. Cool. That's as far as my plans go at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> We've got big, big plans this year for, for Andrea, but obviously the focus is the Arnold's to start with. Yes. Um, and one thing I always try and focus on, let you guys know as well, is to take it one one show at a time. Often people kind of think, well, you know, a little too far in advance. And right now we're focused on the Arnold's. Your training's going very, very well. Today was awesome. As much as she doesn't like me now because she's in pain. But um, i got to say, I, w I was impressed today, so... Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, right, I want you to take us back and tell us about your first ever competition. I don't know if you can remember it. I can. Um, so, I'd actually signed up to uh, Britain's Strongest Woman in 2015. Um, and that was just a nominate yourself uh, competition because at the time there was no uh, qualification part to it. I, when I found my coach, um, he was already coaching somebody to get um, to get to that competition. But he said, you know, you're going to be up against the strongest in the country. The girls have been training for ages. You need to go for a local competition. Um, so I actually went to Hertfordshire's Strongest Woman, which was an England qualifier at the time. Um, and I won every event uh, quite comfortably. But it was a good, um, a good foundation for me to get competition experience, to get to know uh, the equipment. Because, again, I'd never touched any of the equipment. I was two weeks into Strong Woman training and won my first competition. I think getting that experience in, in like a local competition is, is useful. I mean, someone like yourself, you're so talented and you may get fed up with me saying that to you sometimes because, no. um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we are working now at trying to perfect things and really kind of, you know, hone your skills. But you are extremely gifted and you do have that ability to just go in, like like a lot of kind of top people do. They're, they're just naturally very, very good at this kind of stuff. And then it's about improving on those skills. But obviously your first time, you are nervous, you're worried, mm. you kind of you, you don't know what to expect. So yeah. having that one competition to settle the nerves and see if you're any good at it, it, it is yeah. useful because that step up is, is always tough. Yeah. You're against the at, at the top girls or guys. It, it is a big step, even for the, the naturally gifted. And especially now, the standard's so much higher across mm, the board. Definitely. I mean, I've been doing this a long time, a lot longer than you have. And when I first started, there was literally one or two girls doing strong women. Mm. Whereas now... We've got loads of girls doing it. I mean, there's so many just in the UK. Yeah. Are... The British girls alone are, are in the top top 10 of the world. There's lots of us um, from this country who are taking over strong women. Yeah, well, you, I mean, obviously yourself, you know, Donna, but we've also got great lightweight category mm -hmm. girls as well. Um, and, and a lot of the shows, you're seeing big numbers turn up for... Yeah. What, 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 what do you think has kind of helped strong women grow in the last, I guess, five to ten years? Social media has been massive. Um, when, when I first started out, there was a little bit of um, Facebook. Um, I only got into Instagram a couple of years ago. Um, but social media has been massive. And um, the more the more you get into it, the more you talk about it to somebody else and they talk about it. And it's word of mouth for, for women especially. Um, and it's encouraging other women 
um and that that's been massive i think is just the encouragement because women are, are quite still intimidated to lift weights as much as we think the sport is still growing there's a lot of women out there who are too scared to go into any weight section let alone pull a truck flip tires and pick up stones you know so um yeah i think we're seeing more and more women getting into it now mm -hmm. and I, I know you'd like to see more kind of Definitely. having the confidence to come and do it and I, I, I've always found strongman a much friendlier sport than than some of the kind of strength sports out there, or so, say like bodybuilding, something, something like that. It can be a little bit lonely, whereas obviously you're, it's an individual sport, strongman, but a lot of groups kind of, you know, click together. You've got kind of training groups in different parts of the country, and you can be a lot more supportive of your competition, can't you? Or even though you want to win, obviously yeah, you want to be number one. Yeah, everyone wants to win. You know, you know, I as as I've gone on to my in, within my career, I don't go into a competition wanting to come third. Oh, of I, course. I want to win. Um, however, when I first started, I was quite happy just to take part. Um, even after I, I came third in Britain, so that was my second competition. I still went back and I did the local competitions. I was I was participating in Suffolk Strongest Man, um, which the guys didn't like. <laughs> So you, you took part in a, in a man's competition? In a man's competition, because I was looking for more competition right. experience. Um, and because I got to quite a, a high stage quite quickly, I didn't think it was fair to compete against other women. Okay. But I still went back and I did Northampton Strongest, which you were there. I met you for the first time there. That's right. Um, you know, and I, I was still amongst Britain's Strongest Women, but I hadn't got the competition experience I needed yeah. to progress. So I was going back and doing the local things. Um and from then on, I progressed nicely. So when when was that? That was 2016, 15? S probably 16. Cool. Because then I got my first invite to World's Strongest Woman at the end of that year. How so did you do in that? I came eighth. Okay. Which was a massive knock for me because, because I progressed really quickly and I was, you know, like, Britain's the third in Britain. I won the all the local competitions to then be faced against the world. And I was like, yeah, so I've got this. I came eighth and I was like, hmm, maybe I'm not as good as I thought. However, then I went back and I thought about what I was doing. Focus more on my training, my nutrition. I was very overweight in that competition. Um, and I could see, looking back on it now, I could see that I struggled with a lot of things. Um, and then the next year I came fourth. Awesome. in world so yeah. and then that gave me the hunger i don't want to come fourth or eighth ever <laughs> awesome. um and then i want it the next year that's brilliant and it, it, i've always kind of found i've learned more from my losses than my wins because yeah. it does make you hungry you sort of when you win it's great and you can actually become a little bit complacent whereas Definitely. when you, you you know you're not placing as high as you'd like you start analyzing things a bit more you look at why you weren't winning what you needed to do to, to place better um and, and you go away and work at those kind of weaknesses and you know you've proved that you, you kind of worked your way to the top one world strongest woman do you think you became a little bit complacent yes um i got distracted i think by the uh not the fame as such but the the excitement of winning world strongest woman it opened a lot of opportunities for me um, you know, I did TV work, I was travelling up and down the country, my training kind of slacked a little bit because I was focusing more on the on the other stuff. Um and I think because I in back in the back of my mind I'd won my strongest woman, I can go and do it again. I you know, I was the strongest in the world, I could do anything, but I forgot about the basics and forgot to focus um and put the hard training in that I did the previous year. Um and it showed, it showed, and it like took a massive effect. <laughs> yes, but I, I, I've obviously, you know, we've been talking together recently a lot, and you know, working together now, and you do look like you've got that hunger back, and you, it's you coming look, back. You look it's, focused. Yeah, it's coming Training back. sessions we've had together, you've been really, really focused. I know you're working hard. Um, as much as you moan at me <laughs> about what I sort of <laughs> make you do, you, you're doing really, really well, and I. You know, I wouldn't just say this. I 100% believe in you. You know, you know, I'm, I'm backing you, and I, I believe you're gonna. I, I believe Andrea has what it takes to be the best strong woman ever. I think she's got the talent. Now we're just trying to hone that kind of confidence, the technique, and I don't want to put pressure on you because I want you to just enjoy it. And you know, like I always say, but you have what it takes to be 
an absolutely incredible athlete. You just got to believe it. I'll pay him later. <laughs> <laughs> no, she does. It's, it's funny because Andrea is like such an amazing athlete. A lot of, you know, people look at myself and, and, and you and, you know, other great athletes and they think we're invincible, but mm. we're all the same. We've all got insecurities. There's, there's, there's things you worry about and question whether you're good enough. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, we've had conversations about that and I know loads of people out there, they think that we don't have those kind of thoughts but we do. We're just kind of you know, normal. Normal people. Yeah. Parents. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, with a lot of responsibility mm -hmm. going on, but you're still digging deep, working hard and achieving incredible things. And um, I just hope you get more opportunities and you keep progressing. Yes. Um, I mean, I've enjoyed my training. Um, I think Loz is going to is quickly realizing that I can be a bit of a diva and I can be <laughs> I can I moan and I'm starting to wind a little bit when it starts to hurt. But um thankfully Loz doesn't give in um which <laughs> I've had in the past people have just been just given in to me and I've just been able to sort of stop um so Loz has been a great um rock for me um not just for the training but um emotionally you know we've, we've talked a lot um over the last month so he's been really good and I'm enjoying training again I'm enjoying and for um, me that's the most important thing that you're yeah, enjoying it because yeah. as, as much as we talk about the pressure and stuff this even at your level and my level is still a hobby mm -hmm. you know yeah it, and that's what a lot of people don't realize as well you know there's very very few people making a lot of money from this it's it's a hobby and you want to be the best absolute the absolute best that you mm -hmm. can be as i do as, as we all do but um there's so many more other things that you've got to focus on in your life you know you've got two girls and a family and a job and you know it, it is tough at times yeah. but you, you're enjoying it we're seeing you smiling in training other than yeah. Today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I'm trying to. I'm I'm trying to just remember why I started the sport in the first place. You know, it was a hobby. I wanted to change what I was doing with my health. Um, and it was fun. It was fun in the in the beginning, and it it very quickly became serious. And I forgot what I why I started it in the first place. So, um, this last month especially is taking me back to enjoying it again. Good. Um, enjoying training, enjoying being strong enjoying the changes in my body um, and just see what, what happens. Awesome. Well, we had you guys kind of ask some questions for us before we, we train today. So um, Liz is going to ask the questions. You don't need to say that. I'm cutting this bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cutting myself out. <laughs> but, um, we'll go for, for question number one. Um, so I've been training for strong women um, probably now I'm coming into my sixth year. Um, so my first competition was in 2015. Um, oh, that's only five years, isn't it? Well, you've seen how bad I can count today. Um, so about five years it's taken me. However, I, I was in CrossFit for a couple of years before that um, and did sort of boot campy stuff, which kind of started me into exercise. Cool. Uh, for myself... I progressed very, very quickly. I went from kind of complete beginner to competing at World's Strongest Man within three years. But saying that, it was a little bit easier back then. The standard's so much higher now, and it takes a lot longer. And looking back, I made a lot of mistakes, and there's things I would have changed, um, you know, injuries that I had that I could have probably avoided, and certainly things that I try and make all my clients avoid these days. I think you're always better on focusing on, on slower, steady progress than getting really, really good really quickly, and then kind of being held back due to probably pushing too hard sometimes um but yeah i mean i've, I've almost forgotten how many years i've been doing this for so <laughs> too many <laughs> in an arm wrestle between you and me i'm not even going to get my guns out <laughs> that's for another video if you want to see me and andrea arm wrestle comment below <laughs> Good question. Um, that's a really good question. Um, it's taken a good few years for me to um, control the pressure, control the nerves. Um, even now, um, the the pressure can get to me, and as a lot of people will notice that I'm making I'm making mistakes when I'm competing, and that's just pressure that gets to me. And I'm now trying to control it. I'm trying to deal with that. Um, I, I don't even know how I've how I've managed to control it over the years. It's just something that you've it's kind of built into you. Um, you just do it. 
I, I totally agree. You, you just have to put yourself into the situation mm -hmm. and the more experience you get, the, yeah. the easier it gets. But even after competing in 11 World's Strongest Man competitions and countless internationals, I still get nervous before the first event. Um, but I just try and remind myself that I'm there to enjoy it. I try and take confidence from the training that I've done leading up to the show that things have progressed and, um, you know, just putting yourself in the situation. It's, it, you've got two options with, with anything in life. You can either hide away from it and never achieve anything, or you can take the risk. The worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to fail. But I failed loads of times in competitions, but I've also had some tremendous successes mm. as well. And, you know, the successes outweigh the, the, the negative sides to me. You know, I, I get in there and, and, and give it my all. And sometimes it goes well, sometimes it doesn't. But life moves on regardless. It's not the end of the world if it doesn't go well. But you can often learn from it anyway. So, you know, don't don't let it cripple you into to not competing. Just just get stuck in, give it 100 percent and learn from it regardless. Mm -hmm. Um, in the week before a competition, um, a lot of mine tend to be in America, so I tend to take a few days um, prior to me flying out as like just a bit of a chilling out, um, spending time with the family. When it comes to actually deload for um, events or you know, actual training, I don't think I've really had an actual deload. I kind of work at my maximum until about a week before the actual date of the competition. So now that I'm with Loz... I don't know how that's going to differ. It's going to, is it going to change? Yeah, you won't be okay, doing that. I won't be doing that. <laughs> so probably best to ask Loz what I'm going to be doing. <laughs> it, it varies depending on the level that you're at. But for someone like Andrea, we'll probably back off probably two weeks before the show, um, which she'll be terrified about and think she's going to get weak. But I promise you she won't. Um, like myself, my last heavy deadlift session is normally three weeks before a show. Uh, squatting and pressing, I could, I'd probably go to two weeks before. Uh, the, the the week before, kind of the, the two weeks before that, kind of kind of, I have a very light week the week before, and the week before that is a moderately heavy session, and it'll be the same for you. It won't be maxing out. You'll be sort of seventy five, eighty percent, um, which she's terrified at now. I can see it in her <laughs> eyes. But the reason being that as you as you get close to competition, you know you've been training really really hard. You, you break the muscles down, your, your body will be battered from the hard work that we've been putting in. And then the most important thing becomes getting to the show, feeling as fresh as possible and as recovered as possible, because that's when you're going to be your strongest. And, um, you know, we're still going to train. You're still going to go through movement patterns, but training will become lighter. You'll focus on nutrition, recovery. You know, you'll be looking at getting chiropractic treatment, physio, things like that. When you have long trips, like Andrew's going to be out in America, just traveling can take it out of you. So we need to make sure she's as fresh as possible. We'll try and get some treatment while you're out there. Um, and then it's just mentally distracting yourself from the competition as it gets close, um, ready to switch on when, when you have to. If you sit there analyzing everything and worried about everything, you just drain energy. So When it comes to that kind of thing, I do actually read. I do um, tend to put my phone down um, because the pressure with social media, again, get, can get really overwhelming, especially as you come up to a competition. So I actually read. I do like a good book um, and it distracts me from just what's going on in the world in itself um, and just stops me thinking so much about training and the competition itself. Um, so I like to take a good look, a, a good book and spend time with the kids because I'm going to be away for a week as well. So I think that's brilliant. I, I totally agree with Andrea there about getting away from social media close to a competition. Um, I normally let Liz take over my kind of social media close to a comp so that I'm not seeing anything that's going to distract me, whether it's great comments or negative comments. I'd rather just focus on my own goals, my own, you know, keep my head clear. And then you can look at all that stuff after, but it's very easy to let what other people are doing distract you. So just focus on what you've done. You know, if you've trained hard, you're improving, you're going there with your own targets and goals, focus on those. Don't worry about anyone else and, and give it a hundred percent and you'll, you'll be proud of yourself regardless. It's quite, quite long answers, isn't it? You, can talk, you like a long answer. <laughs> yeah. The answer's like 10 questions. But... <laughs> like, I forgot what the question was when yeah. the time it's finished. <laughs> Interviewers love him though. Like for the TV breakaway stuff like that, they're like, oh, Lord, is so good. Oh, yeah, that's like, good, yeah. Like, like, politicians' answers, really. <laughs> yeah, 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 he's oh, just <laughs> How did you feel? Um...
my first big show was uh world's strongest woman um in doncaster i was terrified um i'd had my big sister with, with me that day um but because she was you know she didn't really know what i needed to do she was in the audience and i was just left with the athletes um the girls kind of had already known each other for a little while i think um so i just felt very lonely and just absolutely petrified um nervous um it, it came to the point in the end where the girls were quite friendly but it was it's just a whole new experience there's nothing that i'd ever dealt with in my life before I'd never been so competitive that i was at a major show um you know that was put on and there were cameras and there was people there that i'd seen on tv or the guys the strongman guys um so i was actually terrified i think that's very normal yeah. <laughs> in, a, in a short answer terrified yeah, I, I, I remember my first ever competition and i remember getting out the car looking around thinking sod this these are all huge i'm going home but I got stuck in and did fine. And my first big major competition, I was, was World's Strongest Man in 2008. And I had Marius Pudzianowski in my group, who was the best strong man in the world at the time. Um, so obviously very, very nervous, excited, you know, lots of kind of, you know, emotions. But um, a lot more excited than I am these days to compete. <laughs> but it was, it was good, you know. I tried to remind myself to focus on my own goals again, like I always do. Um, and, I, and I enjoyed it. And I... You know as nervous as i was and it's natural to be nervous so i don't think that's ever a, ever a bad thing it's just not letting it become crippling so that you can't perform um but i, I remember the amount of times i'm back and forth to the toilet beforehand oh, yeah. in a wee and yeah. stuff like that and at world's strongest man you get tested <laughs> immediately after event sometimes so you have to do a, a urine test for for various different things and literally beforehand I could pee all day long mm -hmm. and then I do my first event and I'm just dried up <laughs> and then you've got the doctor looking over your shoulder as you try to <laughs> try to take a pee is um, a little bit awkward that was a bit that was probably more nerve-wracking for me than the than the competing <laughs> but um yeah it, it's, it's going to be nerve-wracking it's going to be exciting it's going to be fun uh but you just got to get in there and, and give 100% and, and like I said earlier win lose a draw life goes on <clears throat> Right, just quickly to finish off with, we're going to do 10 questions that I've asked a number of strong men um, on my blog, starting to do it on these now. And you just got to give us the first answers that come to your head. Okay. So first up, <laughs> what was the last thing you put in your mouth? Um, tea. <laughs> Good answer. If you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? Somewhere hot and with a beach. Um... I don't really, not anywhere specific. Jamaica? Cultural. Well, it doesn't have to be Jamaica. There are there are other places to go okay. in the world, yeah. yeah. Cool. If you could have a superpower, what would it be? Teleporting. Hmm. Because I think, I would like to mind read, but I think that would do my head in. Yeah. I like, I knowing too much isn't yeah. always good. No. Uh, what are you absolutely determined to do? um when it comes to the sport just to stay injury free um and to achieve as many goals as i can um and just make my family proud um but just in life in general just to be happy i'm boring i know I'm sorry. <laughs> i don't know what you want to say <laughs> no i'm just teaching you yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think of like some exciting <laughs> What's your proudest accomplishment? Having two beautiful children. Good answer. Which actor would you, would play you in a film about your life? Or actress? Whoopi Goldberg. Yeah, I like that. That's good. She's cool. What job would you be really bad at? Um, maths teacher. <laughs> two plus two. <laughs> two numbers, as you know. <laughs> right, quick fire round. Arnold's or Worlds? Arnold's. Night in or night out? Mm, right out. <laughs> Facebook or Instagram? Uh, neither. Home cooked meal or restaurant? Home cooked meal. Chocolate or ice cream? Chocolate. Max weight or reps? Max. <laughs> I can't ask her this one. Full head of hair or a majestic beard? <laughs> Can I just say forehead? 
Yeah. Oh, I can't say forehead, can I? <laughs> <laughs> that did. <laughs> Shower or bath? Shower. Cat or dog? Actually, no, I like a bath. Yeah? I like a bath, yeah. Nice big bath. Yes. Lots chill. of bubbles. Cat or dog? <sighs> Neither, because I'm really allergic to both. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, a living massage therapist or living chef? Um, massage therapist, because I can cook. Good choice. I like a massage therapist. Yeah, that would be really good. Although I'd like a chef too. Yeah, though that would be nice yeah. to you. Right? I think Liz would like a chef as well. Yeah. Probably like a massage. No, you, you whinge when I give you a massage. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank you so much for coming down today and, and doing this silly little question. <laughs> I hope you have fun. I did. And um, I look forward to training with you very soon. Yes. And good luck for the rest of the year. I know you're going to smash it. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. If you have any questions you'd like to ask Andrew or myself, comment below and we'll have another look um, maybe next time you come down and train. Yep. Awesome. Take it easy.